Hello, Justin here from Royal Botanical Gardens. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a few air and water experiments that you can do at home. So if you haven't already, go and check out rvg.ca slash at home where you will find instructions to these experiments so you can try them out on your own. If you want to see how they're set up or see how my results have turned out, feel free to keep on watching and we'll get started. In the powerful air experiment, we ask the question, can air lift a dime off a table? All you have to do is place a dime on a table and a plate about four fingers away from the dime. Then, only using air, you try and get the dime onto the plate. The trick is to blow above and straight over the dime. While air is usually pressing down on objects, when it moves, it presses down less. When air moves fast enough, it can pick up objects and carry it with them, like how the air can pick up the dime. Strong winds, like in tornadoes and hurricanes, can lift really heavy objects and pull trees out of the ground. The sticky water experiment tests to see if water can move itself through a string. All you need is two cups, one with water, and one empty, and a string. To set it up, you want to soak the string in the water, and then have one end in the water and the other end hanging in the empty cup. Water likes to stick together. As water drips out of one end of the string into the empty cup, more water gets pulled into the string from the other end, helping move the water through the string. This property is very important in plants. As water gets absorbed by a plant and travels through it, more water gets pulled into the roots because it likes to stick together. For the walk on water experiment, we want to see if we can make a paperclip float. If you drop a paperclip in a cup of water, it will sink. But if you gently lay the paperclip flat on the surface of the water, using a fork to help, you can see that it floats. This is because of surface tension. Surface tension is kind of like a skin that is made on the surface of water because the molecules or the particles of water like to hold on to each other. This helps the surface of water hold things up like a paperclip or animals like water striders that can walk on water. This experiment represents the water cycle and how rain forms. The large bowl is the earth. Inside the large bowl you have the small bowl, which is land, and the hot water, which represents oceans and lakes. The plastic wrap and ice cubes represent the cold atmosphere and clouds that cover the earth. The blue food coloring is just to make changes easier to see. When setting up, you want to make sure that your plastic wrap is sealed all around the edges so that no water can get in or out. This experiment shows the parts of the water cycle, evaporation, condensation, precipitation, and collection. As the sun heats up water from the earth, it evaporates or turns into a gas and rises into the atmosphere. When it reaches the cold atmosphere, it condenses or turns into a liquid to form clouds which can carry water all around the world. When the clouds get heavy enough, the water falls from the sky as rain or snow when it's cold and is called precipitation. You can see in the small bowl that some water from the ocean has collected on the land where it will flow back into rivers, lakes, the oceans, and evaporate again, restarting the water cycle. I hope you had fun learning about some of the properties of air and water. If you're interested in some more activities, check out rbg.ca slash at home. And until next time, happy learning.